I am passionate about sharing this practice, and I want to welcome you to Yoga with Katie. Thank you so much for joining me in today's mobility-focused practice. So I have with me here Felicia and Jesse, and we're going to take you through a really delicious floor series that is meant to just mobilize all of the major joints and muscles in the body. And we will begin this practice, as we often do, by tuning into the breath. So I will have my yogis here come onto your backs. And we'll take a pose called Ardha Shavasana. So in this posture, you're on your back, your knees are bent, feet are about mat width apart. Turn your toes inwards and allow your knees to knock together. And this will just uh, create a little bit of stability and comfort for the lower back. And then place your left hand on your heart and your right hand on your belly. Take a moment to push down through your elbows to lift your shoulders up and then slide your shoulder blades down your back, creating a little bit of space between your ears and your shoulders. And then go ahead and allow the eyes to lightly close. And I want you to take these first few moments to just land on the four corners of your mat. So come into a place of presence in terms of sensing where your body is in space, feeling the backside of your body gently imprint itself into the ground, which can be such a lovely, supportive, and comforting sensation. Notice the feeling of spaciousness around the front of the body. And bring your attention to the skin on your face. We often hold so much tension and fatigue in the face. And I want you to just invite a smoothness to the skin on the forehead. I want you to imagine the space between your eyebrows widening just a little bit. Relax the pouches of your cheeks and unclench your jaw. And allow the tongue inside of your mouth to rest away from the roof of the mouth. And the tip of the tongue can rest just behind the bottom row of teeth. And now tune into the natural ebb and flow of your breath. And what you'll find when we observe the natural breath without doing anything to deepen or alter it, is that the breath is often quite shallow, almost imperceptible. And something interesting to note is that if you feel that you're in sort of a frenetic or anxious state or a worried state, then typically what you'll find is that your inhales are deeper or more emphasized than your exhales. So we tend to be taking in too much breath and not letting out enough. And then alternatively, if you find that you're in sort of a fatigued or lethargic or apathetic state, or maybe even feeling a little bit low or depressed, the natural breath, you'll find the exhales are longer. It's almost like there's this continuous sigh going on and you're not taking in enough air. You're not taking in enough vital life energy. So notice this in your natural breath at this time just observe and start to gather a little bit of information about where you're at in this particular moment and then we'll begin the practice of introducing a sense of harmony or balance to the inhales and exhales so i want you to take a very deep inhale through the nose let your chest rise and your belly puff out making room for the diaphragm to drop down and then keeping the lips sealed, exhale long and smooth through the nose. Press the breath out, engage the abdominals a little bit and let the chest fall. Let's do that again. Inhale slow and deep through the nose. Fill up the lungs gently to maximum capacity. And then press the exhale out through the nose. Feel everything fall and soften inwards. We'll do this to a count of four. So breathe in, two, three, four, exhale out, two, three, four, deep breath in, two, three, four, exhale out, two, three, four, one more inhale, two, three, four, exhale out, two, three, and four. 
and then allow your breath to find its own natural rhythm once again and gather up your knees and pull them in close to the chest. Start to rock from side to side, massaging out the kidneys and massaging out the little pencil eraser sized adrenal glands that sit on top of the kidneys. And then take your hands to your knees or to your shins and start to take the knees in some wide circles, just increasing some mobility through the hips, getting the synovial fluid to move more actively through the joints, feeling a stretch through the groins as well. And then go ahead and take the knees in the opposite direction, just noticing how this feels in your hips and your body and how this movement changes the flow of your breath. And then give your knees a little squeeze in towards the chest. And then kick your heels straight up towards the sky. Take your hands to the backs of the hamstrings or the knees. And then just look at your feet and start to point and flex the toes a few times. Spread your toes wide apart. Maybe you can see a little bit of ceiling between each of your toes, getting those toes and feet really functional. And then separate your legs just a little bit and circle your ankles in one direction a few times, mobilizing the ankle joints. And then circle the ankles in the opposite direction. Good. And then let's interlace the fingers behind the right hamstring. Place the sole of the left foot flat on the mat. And if you can kick up through that right heel and keep the right leg perfectly straight without any straining to your lower back, go ahead and extend that left leg out long on the mat. And we'll hold this hamstring stretch for a few breath cycles. So breathe in and out of the nose. See if you can match your inhales to your exhales in length and in depth and in intensity. Try to straighten the right leg a little bit more. Press the back of that hamstring into your interlaced fingers and really peel those right toes back towards your face. Good, let's go ahead and bend that right knee. We'll take a wind relieving pose here. So you interlace your fingers just on the right shin and you use the strength of your biceps or the fronts of your arms here to pull that knee up towards the right armpit. And if you have been resting with your left leg bent, this would be a good time to kick that left leg out along the length of your mat. So breathe into the belly here. We're giving the ascending colon a bit of a massage. We'll take one more full inhale through the nose and an exhale through the nose. And then keep hold of that right knee with your left hand. Stretch the right arm out in line with your shoulder, palm flat. Big breath in and then exhale, take that leg over to the left into a twist. So you can really pause at any point here where you feel a good uh, sensation or rotation in the spine. If you have blocks handy or a bolster or a cushion of some sort, you could always put that underneath the right leg for more support. And we'll hold here for just another couple of breaths. I'm giving Jessie an adjustment here, just increasing the space between her shoulder and her hip. Does that feel okay? Good. And then go ahead and bring yourself back to center. Draw both knees into the chest, give them a little bit of a loving squeeze. And then we'll kick both heels up towards the ceiling once again. Interlace the fingers behind the left hamstring and then place the sole of the right foot flat on the mat. If you've got the mobility in this left leg to kick it up straight without any straining to your neck or your back, then you can kick this uh, right leg out long. So as you hold this hamstring stretch, just a little talk or mention about the ego. So, you know, the ego is kind of our inner child or the part of us that is competitive and wants to be validated and wants to be seen and complimented and acknowledged. And the ego fluctuates, you know, we can feel really confident. And then if we don't get that external validation, our self-esteem can plummet and we kind of ride these waves of, of up and down with the ego. So in a yoga practice, for example, you wanna really take on a practice of humility. So when I mentioned the parameters around this leg being straight and what's going on in the back and the neck. I want you to really listen to your body and honor what you're feeling. And if it really is more appropriate for you to rest with this knee bent and the foot flat to give your back and your hamstring some ease, please allow yourself to do this. Let your ego kind of take a back seat and uh, do what's best for yourself. Okay, so let's go ahead and take wind relieving pose. So you can bend that knee in towards the chest, interlace the fingers around the left shin, and go ahead and kick the right leg out long on the mat. 
Now start to really use deep breaths here in and out of the nose to maximize the benefits of this compression that we're creating through the descending colon. So first we kind of moved everything in the ascending colon with the pressure of that right leg. And now we've come across to the descending colon, of course, the part of the colon responsible for good elimination. And so we want to use the breath here to create a massage in that part of the colon. Good. Let's take one more inhale through the nose. One more exhale through the nose. Keep hold of the left shin with the right hand. Stretch your left arm out in line with your shoulder. Inhale the breath. And as you exhale, guide that left leg over and across into your twist. <laughs> 